Hello and welcome back. Till today, we have learned a lot of basics about Databricks platform. Today, we are going to ingest data into Data Lakehouse using one of the SQL utilities that is available known as Copy Into. Now, Copy Into is a very useful SQL command that you can use to load multiple different file formats into Data Lake. Now, best benefit of Copy Into is it is retriable and item potent. Item potent simply means even if you run this copy into command for the same files again and again, the results of the table would not change. It means once a file is loaded using copy into into the target table, you cannot reload the file even if you run copy into multiple times. So this is very good option for retry and item potent data pipelines. And this similar functionality is also known as exactly once functionality. It means the data files will only be loaded exactly once, not more than that. Now, if you scroll down under this document, you can see this copy into supports multiple source file formats. So it can support CSV, JSON, Avro, Parquet, text, and also binary file formats, right? And also this is exactly once, plus it also allows you to have schema inference, mapping, and schema evolution. Now, you can learn more about copy into by going into this document, which has all the informations about the syntax and the options that are available with copy into. Today, we are going to write our own copy into commands in order to load some of the files in our data lake house. Now, before we do that, if you have not seen our previous video, I would recommend you to go back and watch them first. So, without any delay, let's begin. I am in my Databricks workspace. I have already created a notebook called Copy Into and my cluster is also up and running. Now, for today's demonstration, I am going to create a new managed volume under Dev Branch Schema with the name of Landing. And I am also going to create a folder called Input in which we will put the files which will be used to read using Copy Into Utility. Okay. Now, we have already seen how to create managed volumes and how to create folders within volumes in our past video. If you have not seen that, go ahead and check out this video. Now, I have already written the commands to create the volume. So, let me just go ahead and run this to create the managed volume first. Awesome. My volume is created. Let me just go ahead and run the dbutils command in order to create the input folder in the same volume. Okay. So, let me run this. Great. It says true. So, let me just go ahead and expand it on the left hand side. I'll go in dev branch and then I'll expand the volumes. And now you can see landing volume here. If I expand this, you can see the input folder, right? So, if I expand this right now, there is no files inside this input folder. Okay. So, we already have some data available by Databricks datasets under this location. You can go ahead and check out this location. These are some of the invoice data for retail. And I'm going to copy some of the files into the same directory that we have just created. Okay. So, I'm going to use the dbutils command. So, let me just remove the comment first and let me just run this. Awesome. It says true. Let me just refresh on the left hand side. And now you can see a file here, right? Similarly, I will again copy one more file, which is for 02. Okay. So let me just run this command as well. Great. It says true. Let me just refresh. Awesome. I can see both of the files into our volume, right? Now, since both of the files are present in our volume, we can go ahead and ingest this file into the data lake house using copy into command. Okay. Now, we will create a placeholder table first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a placeholder table called dev branch invoice CP. Now, what is the meaning of placeholder table? It means we'll not define any schema for this table. Rather, we'll just create the table and we will use the copy into command in order to create the schema on the fly while we load the files into this table. Okay. So in order to create a table, we can just go ahead and write create table and the name of the table. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it here. Okay. Now, I'll not specify any columns because this is a placeholder table. There will be no schema defined. Okay. So I'll just put a semicolon and I'll run this. It says OK. It means the table is created, right? Let me just refresh and see it on the left hand side. So I'll refresh the catalog and I'll go into the tables. I'll scroll down and I can see the invoice CP, right? So if I expand this, you cannot find any column. Okay. But if I expand any of the existing table, for example, EMP updates, you can see the column names, right? But for this placeholder table, there is no column defined. So this columns will be created on the fly when we use the copy into command in order to load the data into this table. Okay. Now that our table is ready, let's go ahead and write our first copy into command in order to load the files that we just brought in in our volumes, right? The first and the second file. Okay. So first thing that we need to write in order to load the data is copy into. And then we need to provide the name of the table where we want to load the data. So this was the name of the table. So I'll just copy this from here. Now we need to provide the base location from where we want to read the data. So I'll just write from and I'll put the location here, which is exactly this. So I'll just copy it from here and I'll paste it here. So our base location is under volumes, dev branch, landing, and the folder which is input. Okay, we are gonna read all the files under this folder. So this is the one. Now we need to provide the file format. Now we know this file is already CSV files, right? So let's go ahead and write file format is equals to CSV. 
okay now you can specify patterns for which it has to read the file for example our pattern is star.csv right so we need to load only csv files for example there can be more than different type of csv files present here so only need to load .csv files so in order to do that you can just write pattern and the pattern that we need to load is star.csv so it will make sure to check this pattern before loading the data into the table okay now that we have written this we will add one more option called format options now this format options is used for the files okay now consider you are reading csv files and some of the csv files have different schema and you want to load all of them by merging it for example the first file might contain three columns and the second file might contain five columns right so there are two extra columns in the second file so if you don't specify the merge schema option in order to read the files it will fail okay so we will just write merge schema equals true and again we need to wrap this in single quotes both the side okay now in our case both the files have same schema so it does not make any sense but you can always specify this in order to make sure that you are reading all the columns from all the files so it will merge all the files schema and then it will load the data okay so this format option is for the source data that you are reading now the next option is since we have headers in the file we also need to specify that so i'll write header equals true okay so we've specified the source options now we'll specify the target options now i'll write copy options so what is our copy options since we have not specified any schema for this table so we have to merge the schema while loading right so we have to write merge schema this is for the target table okay we have to merge the schema while loading the data because the schema has not been supplied for the table okay so we are going to use merge schema as true okay now that we are done i'll put a semicolon here and i'm gonna run this it says an error called csv because we don't have to put this in single quote because this is a file format so i'll just remove this and i'll make it csv like this okay and i'll run this awesome the job got completed and now you can see the number of affected rows and the number of inserted rows okay it means these are the total number of rows which are inserted into the table okay we can go ahead and check this so i have already written a select statement from the table let me just go ahead and run this now Awesome. You can see the data loaded, right? So if I scroll to the right, you can see all of the columns and this has all the data that has been loaded from both the input files. Now, let me just scroll up and rerun the copy into command. So we're talking about item potent data ingestion. It means even if I rerun this, the data will only be processed exactly once, right? So let me just rerun this again. So I've rerun the copy into command. So let me just scroll up. Now, if you see, even if I rerun, it says the number of affected rows, inserted rows or skipped count is zero. It means the data is not loaded again. So somehow copy into is maintaining a metadata in order to make sure the pipelines are item potent. It means the files are only processed exactly once, not more than once. Okay. So copy into is a retriable and an item potent option. Now let's go ahead and check how copy into is maintaining these options of item potent. Okay. So let me just scroll down and we are going to run a describe on the table. So I'm going to write describe expanded and I'm going to copy the table name from top. So let me just scroll down and let me paste this here okay and let me just run awesome it completed let me just scroll down and if you see this is the location where the data is stored right so let's go ahead and check in the storage browser of azure portal what all is stored within this location and again this is under meta store right so it should be there where our meta store is present in the storage browser so i'll quickly switch back to my azure portal and i'll get into the blob container and into the root and into meta store and this is our meta store so let me just go ahead and expand the tables and let me just expand this on the right and let me just copy the table name which is f9b80 okay so i'll just search for that f9b80 okay so let me just expand this and now you can see delta log and the data files present right so if i expand this delta log now here you can see something called copy into log okay and this is where exactly copy into maintains this metadata to make sure that your pipelines are ident potent Okay, so even if you rerun the same file again and again, nothing will be loaded because copy into is maintaining its metadata within the delta log. Okay, to so make sure only files which are new are only ingested into the delta table. Let's quickly switch back to our database workspace. Okay, now that we know how copy into maintains its item potent or exactly once behavior, let's go ahead and see a scenario where consider you only want to load three columns into a table, not more than that, or you want to load a custom column, for example, insert date. How you are going to do that? So let's go ahead and create a table first. So for that, I'll write create table and I'll name the table as invoice alt. Okay. And I'm going to use 
three columns from the top. So I'm just going to copy invoice number, which would be string. Okay. And I'm going to copy stock code, which would again be string and say quantity. And we will make this as double. Okay. And we'll add one custom column called insert date, which would be a timestamp. Okay, so this would be when we load the data into the table. Okay, let's go ahead and create this table first. Okay, my bad. I've just created this in Hive Metastore. Let me just do it in Dev Branch. Okay, so I'll just add Dev Branch and I'll rerun this. Okay, so let me just go ahead on the left and refresh again. If I scroll down, you can see the table here with all the three columns invoice number, stock code, and quantity as double and insert date as timestamp. Okay. Now that we have already created our table, let's go ahead and use the same copy into command in order to load the data. This time we'll make some change. So I'll just scroll up and copy the copy into command again. Okay, and I'll scroll down and I'll paste it here. Okay, now we have to load this into alt table. So I'll first change the name of the table. Now we are going to use the same input. Okay, but this time we are going to add a select star command here in order to make sure that we format the data according to our use. So what I'm going to do is so I've wrapped this in brackets. So I'll just put an enter here and I'll write a select star command. So I'll write select and the columns that I want to read. So I want to read invoice number from this and stock code. And I want to cast quantity as double. So I'll write quantity as double. And then I'll write the name of the column, which would again be quantity. Okay. And we want to add insert date. Okay. Which would be current timestamp right so i'll write insert date okay and this would be from the same file location from where we are reading the data and now you can use a custom select query in order to modify or transform your data when you load the data using copy into so this is how you write it okay so again the file format would remain same the pattern would again remain same the merge schema and header would remain same but this copy into is optional because this time we have already defined the schema so let me just go ahead and remove this okay and let me just rerun this Okay, the error is because I've just misspelled this. So I have to write quantity. Okay, so this is the name of the column. And because of this mismatch, it is throwing an error. So let me just rerun this. Great. Now, if you see, it has again loaded the data and the data is present in this table. Let me just go ahead and do a select star. So I'll scroll down and I'll write select star from and I'll paste it here and I'll rerun. So if you see, now we have only four columns in the table and the data is loaded properly. Okay, now you know how you can use custom formatting in the data while loading the data using copy into as well. So now let's go ahead and add one more file into the volume location, okay, which is for 03 in order to see if the data is processed incrementally or not. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll quickly scroll up and where we are copying the file, I'll just change the value to 03. Okay, and I'll rerun this. So it will just copy one more file called 03. So if I refresh, you can see a 03 here. Okay, so let me just scroll down to the bottom copy into. And let me just rerun this. So now, if you see, it has only processed 2202 records, which is exactly the record count for the third file. Okay. So it is processing the data incrementally now. So you can go ahead and verify this. So what I'll do is I'll quickly make a count one on this table. Okay. And now you can see it's 7,419. Now, if we subtract 2,202 from this, that becomes 5,000 something. So, which is exactly equals to the data, which was already present in the table. So, data is being processed incrementally now. Great. Now, you know how you can use copy into command in order to ingest multiple source file format data into data lake house. Now, there is one more important point to note. Copy into command is very useful and scalable when you have around 1,000 files to load but consider a situation where you have millions and millions of files to load per hour and you have a very complex nested directory structure. In those cases, Databricks recommends you to use autoloaders. And in our next video, we are going to see how you can use autoloaders in order to ingest various file formats into Data Lakehouse. I hope this session was very useful for you. In our next video, we are going to discuss about autoloaders. Till then, keep learning, keep growing and keep sharing.